And welcome to another edition of the Big Nick Energy Podcast. First, check out our sponsor, Empire Original Designs at jointheempire.com, the East Coast's number one challenge coin manufacturer, the home of challenge coins, lapels, pins, patches, keychains, bottle openers, and more. Mention our podcast, Big Nick Energy, via email. Do a little shimmy for 5% purchases. Once again, that's jointheempire.com. I'm your host, Joe Yoke, the bald kid wonder. That's my co-host, the New York Postman, a.k.a. Trey Dews, a.k.a. delivers every day and twice on Sunday, except for today, the first day of Summer League this man got off. Coach, Postman, Deuce, buddy, how you doing? I'm very well, my friend. How are you? I'm happy to have a couple of days off in a row, my friends. Two? What? Oh, yeah. They gave oh. me three. Are you fired? Did you get fired? Did they not tell that's, you yet? That's what I know. That's what I said. I said, right, is everything all right, guys? <laughs> so, You're yeah, like, no. uh, you actually delivered to the wrong address 18 days in a yeah, row. Yeah, you, you fired. It just this one guy you seem to hate. Yeah, out of here. Frank, there's been a lot that's happened. Uh, we actually yeah. recorded a podcast that apparently is going to be lost in the depths of time. That we already talked about a lot of this stuff. But we're going to start okay back over, that. baby. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Second time's a charm. Let's do All it. All right, let's go. So free agency happened about 18 fucking years ago now. The Knicks, first off, they signed a bunch of their own guys. They brought back Alec Burks, fully guaranteed, three-year, 30 mil. Apparently, none of these are actually guaranteed. They're all team options at the end. Nerlens Noel, three-year, 30 mil. Derek Rose, three-year, 43 mil. Thought that was a little bit of an overpay, but also a team option at the end, which means it's a little bit not of an overpay. Um, and Evan Fournier, your boy, my your boy. boy. It's, he's really my boy. He is your boy. <laughs> he, almost, he almost beat America. He, <laughs> him and Rudy Gobert. He legitimately almost beat America, like legit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Put the I'm, team on his back. Him and literally Rudy Gobert. Wow. Uh, four years, 78 mil, uh, three year, 57 mil guarantee the team option for 20 point mil in the fourth year, which I mean, he does as well as I think they do. He does. He will. He'll probably. He's worth it. Up. Uh, dude, which of these? So between. Oh, also, how could I forget the best contract we signed? Kemba Walker out of nowhere. I know, how did that happen? I don't know. Our, uh, our brass waited it out. They knew something was in the mix. They made sure they kept a little bit of money on the table, and we stole Kemba Walker off of how much did uh, Oklahoma City buy out? Was it like seventy-four million or something like four seventy-eight? A lot. It was. And then a we lot were just money. like, "Hey, here's a couple of bucks. Come here's play eight for mil. us. Yeah, how do you want to? You want to come home? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Uh, we were able to. I mean, barring injury, right? Yeah. Um, it's amazing that we were able. Dude, to, eight million. It's a flyer. I mean, do you think Kemba Walker, if healthy, is a top 10 point guard in the league? Ooh, do I have to readjust my things? He didn't make the top 16 or 17 so, that so I had. He was, I, would, I would think he's definitely top 15 in the if league. He's a, dude, I mean, if he's healthy. What do I say all the time? The best part, the biggest part of ability is availability. Right. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, I think Kemba Walker brings that that it factor, that killer instinct, because the guy's a straight killer, and he's coming to New York. So he's going to play even harder for us. I was really excited to see that. I It kind of made me think a lot of these contracts were put in place to uh, possibly move them at some point. When I saw Kevin Knox get pulled from uh, the summer league with the, with the health restriction, I thought maybe they were going to move him and move somebody else. Oh, speaking of which, thank God the last uh, podcast for that note for you got lost in the depths of time. Kevin Knox was potentially one of your MVP candidates for summer league. No, that was your, that was your MVP candidate. No, mine was IQ. (laughs) No, you, you said that he had to, he had to win MVP is what you said. Oh yeah. For him to actually. Yeah. yeah, You bastard. Don't you? Yeah. Bastard. Don't put that evil on me. It's Uh, Hey, by the way, you know what Kemba Walker signing does? If I'm OKC turns me off. If I'm the Knicks turns me on, baby. I mean, it's a, it's a low risk, high reward signing. You know, yeah. the guy had knee problems. You put him on a team with a guy who had the most knee problems, the most notable knee problems at the same position. Do um, you think if they just put, like, Kemba Walker's right knee and then Derrick Rose's left knee on one body, that would be good? A Frankenstein point guard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Could you imagine? Like, we can, we have the technology. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, we fuse you both into one. I think that's actually what the Knicks front office idea is, though. It's like, both of these guys separate, they're not making it through 82 games. Both right. of you guys together, maybe yeah, they just split the minutes. Yeah, just split the minutes. No, they're literally going to split the overall games played. They're both going to miss half the year. 
they're gonna yeah it's true just just play one until he gets hurt and then start playing the other they might be dragon ball z fans too you know and they just have him do a little fusion, fusion da- a little fusion dance <laughs> yeah <laughs> and practice every practice oh my god uh, just- i mean listen i'm really happy with these contracts i know you are as well um oh, for sure every every contract is extremely tradable the noel contract gives us an insurance policy on mitch rob Dude, if before- mitch rob is healthy we, we resign him or even though we extend the contract we can sign him to bigger money and if he yeah. doesn't stay, we still have an awesome defensive center you know burks is the is the better choice between him and bullock i'm happy they brought him back um, i am too i'm really surprised they actually were able to keep burks instead of bullock and burks got less money than bullock did which is right. wild to me well i mean i i think well like you said the last podcast or i don't know if maybe it was just us bsing uh the Mavericks are really good at just like, oh, it might have even been not even been you, a buddy of mine. The Mavericks are just really good at just like not winning the big games. Yeah, you know, so like they're they're more willing to throw more money at somebody. I think Alex, I think Alex Burks made the right. I mean, decision Bullock does something that they need though. Like Luca needs shooters. He needs a shooter. Yeah, it's not like Bullock needs to create almost anything off the dribble. He can't dribble more than twice before passing the ball. Yeah, the it's no, it's true. Uh, yeah, he does fit them a lot better. Uh, the D Rose contract, I know, I agree with you that it's a little bit hefty. I actually don't think it is because of the team option. If it not for the team option, I would have said it was. I mean, the guy. I mean, the guy played up to that contract. He was our best player in the postseason. He was our best against the hands Hawks. down, hands down. And you got to reward a guy that that decided to come back after that first debacle we had with him. Yeah. And then he came back. And when he came to us, he was like leaving. He's going AWOL. And then he came back and he was a leader, you know, and he's and and he really stepped up this offseason. The Kemba signing, like we said, lights out. Who would have thought two years, 16 million for this guy just got bought out for 74 million. Who's better than this guy? Yeah. You know, dude, I mean, come to New York. Sam Presti is like the god of GMs and Leon Rose is like, I'm going to poke your button here. I'm going to poke your button here. I got a little cheat code over here. Yeah. Kemba, let me hold 50 bucks, bro. You, just <laughs> yeah. got, you know, like, like, yeah. legit. Um, uh, the one the thing Randall I wanted signing. to say before, oh, dude, the Randall signing is great. Before we get into the Randall signing, though, because I feel like that should be its own separate thing. Okay. I just want to mention how much the Knicks have been playing chess in the past, like, week and a half and like some of the league has been playing checkers like did you see that the bulls and the heat are both under investigation for, for tampering, tampering ball and lowry now i did see that the knicks the first people they signed and announced like a 501 were their own players it's I like it's that. not tampering if you sign your own players back immediately but lonzo ball and lowry who were like the first two people signed it's like well how do they sign contracts at 501 does that mean you talk to them prior we didn't sign Fournier until like a couple hours in. Right. So it seems more legit. I feel like, I don't know how right. it actually works, but it seems like logically it's how it makes sense. And then Kemba happened after a buyout. So no tampering, but the bulls and the heat might lose draft picks now. How I exciting mean, would that I be? mean, now that, that just, that's very exciting because like, <laughs> you know, these, those two teams obviously got better. Um, but I mean, oh, for sure in the long, in the long run now, it's kind of like, you know, how you you took that immediate success and now you're kind of shot in the in the in the long stretch dude the knicks uh, are set up for the future better than either of the i mean the bulls are set for the future too their team is young but who's the, the only i think the hornets are the only other team that are like better set up for the future than us uh i mean if okc ever turns all their picks into something then maybe but well yeah i mean currently instituted you know from like a actual be able to make the playoffs and the future standpoint i would say the bulls are pretty high up there but the heat specifically it's like they just went all in on like win now and their win now is like still the seventh or eighth best team in the league yeah for sure <clears throat> like jimmy butler 200 mil kyle lowry 90 mil like that sounds good but jimmy butler and kyle lowry i think are gonna end up being i never a i'll never say I, I'll never sleep on um Jimmy Butler. Dude is a dude is a bulldog. Uh, I got an affinity for him because I drafted him in fantasy basketball when he was a rookie, and it was in a keeper league. And I knew this guy was going to be a special player. So he's got a he's got a special space in my heart. I, and I won a championship uh, with him on my roster. I don't know if it was that year or the years. I love how much after. we bring up 2K and fantasy basketball. I mean, listen, it's it's part of the culture, man. It's part of yeah. the lifestyle. I grew up doing fantasy sports since I was 14 years old. I've been playing video games since I was five. Yeah, you same. know, and so it's like, I mean, I can only 
link the, the things I love together. And I mean, with sports, it's so easy. We grew up playing sports games. And they do really help and, you as a young person to actually know all the players' and names. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. That's how I, that's how I learned was through fantasy sports with like, yeah. without a doubt. Agreed. Same. That's how I got, I mean, fantasy baseball was the first fantasy sport I ever did, but Me that too. it's too, it's too much. I love fantasy baseball. It's that's what it was made. Fantasy sports was made for baseball. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing stats. I've been doing a dynasty league for uh, at least 10 years now where we do seven keepers and, and two minor league players. Wow. And you literally build your own team, and it's awesome, man. Not it's only like does that GM sound mode. terrible, it's fucking Snoresville for the Knicks fans that are listening. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> dead. Uh, fantasy baseball dynasty league. Just Love it now. Love it, uh, dude. You mentioned it though, Julius Randall. Yeah, a four-year, one hundred seventeen million dollar extension. It comes out to five years, one hundred forty total, and he did not wait till the end of this year to sign potentially five years, two hundred mil for future flexibility and cap space for the team yeah what? he left 80 80 plus mil on the table 88 mil what, what a, a fucking what a guy what a godsend for this franchise. Give this guy the key to the city yeah dude oh right? my god and i mean dude think of it this way he's been he's locked into new york with love like lo- fans love that now for the yep. next five years he probably already signed like 100 deals on times square to make up that money yeah i mean he's he's gonna He's going to be loved by this franchise for years to come. You know, he, um, I mean, in all honesty too, it's a great look for him because he hasn't, he, listen, last season was great and he took a massive step forward, but you have to do that again in order to get max money. Yeah. In my opinion. So I think it's a brilliant thing for him. I think he signed a contract to where not only does it help the team, it secures his future. Um, He knows that he's going to, his usage rate is going to go up. He has a second has kid on the way. Up. Future is important. Right, right. So, like, everything just fell into line at the perfect time. He was willing to take a cut for the team because, listen, if you you know, the playoffs are just super teams now. If you don't have three superstars yeah. on a team, you're not really going to go too far. And for him to take this, take this contract and leave money on the table for us to wiggle around, it's huge for our culture. I'm also excited for him and RJ to be able to play together for four or five years because they yeah. are like so locked in their positions. They yeah. be lockstep the whole time. It's huge, man. It's huge for our culture. It's yeah. huge for the Knicks. We haven't seen, I mean, what's the, when's the last time we say a guy came to New York? Speaking of culture, real quick, RIP yeah. Theo Pinson. You're not dead, but like you are on the Bucks summer you're league. Dead team, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to miss you, Theo. I mean, I don't get the I don't get the Theo Pinson fanboy wave. I see it's it all over about, the internet. It's not Honestly. about playing. It's about him cheering on the sideline. When Jul- when Julius Randle did the one uh, post game interview earlier in the year, it was one of his like thirty eight piece against the Hawks. Yeah. And uh, then Theo Pinson literally interrupts the interview. And he's like, "If this man ain't an all all star, we got a problem." And then he walks away. And I'm like, that that's my hero. I mean, good for you going to get a job somewhere else. Uh, thank you for the five minutes you played. Uh, thank you for your service. I'm not a fanboy. Uh, I don't get it. I, you don't just like call, cheerleaders? Call me old. Call me no. Call me old school, man. No, God, no. You don't like I want, any? Not I even want killers. I want cheerleaders. I, I mean, obviously, so I like. There you, know, you go. You like cheerleaders? The field, so I mean, but I want killers on the court, man. I want killers on. He's not all the court. He no. sits on That's the bench. He I mean, exactly. Dudes. I'm good. All right, whatever. Well, pay me, I mean, pay me that contract to go cheerlead for for these guys. Then uh, I don't think you have the Theo. Energy, I'm jealous. Man. I'm jealous. Yeah, you're right. Not today. That's it's, for damn sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, I'm hungover. You're tired as fuck. I mean, I'm exhausted. Theo, Theo energy is it's not right here. It's right here. It's know? in the heart. All right, it's fair in, enough. Where's my heart on this fucking camera? There we go. It's too there high, it is. But there we go. There it is. Uh, yeah. No, Julius Randle is our hero. I'm really excited for him and RJ to be able to play together four or five plus years. Yeah. And the real joy out of all these signings, the Rose and the inevitability of Rose and Kemba both being out at the same time means I'm going to get some art manual quickly point guard cards. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Which is yep. my most exciting part. And then you're going to, I mean, I mean, and then you're going to have uh, Miles McBride also get minutes too. That means so. I think Deuce McBride is actually, let's jump right into that. So the draft. Yeah. You like that little uh, segue for you? I do, I do, yeah. Well, actually, getting better. even though Deuce McBride was our third player picked the 36th overall point guard out of West Virginia, we could start with him. I think Deuce McBride is actually going to be able to get some minutes just in, 
Like if Deuce McBride can do what everyone thought Frank Nilakina could do as a point guard, which is just play eight to 10 minutes and play like rough house ra- pounding defense, like full right. court press. I right. think he is a great, like he has a great part on this team immediately as rookie. I mean, if I, I mean, the guy had 15 points, 15, um, 16 points a game last season uh, for West Virginia. He had 4.8 assists. He had like four rebounds a game. He had a half a block. He had almost two steals a game. He shot uh, 41% from the three point line. Um, if the guy can come in and give us 10 minutes and average 0.7 steals to one steal, give us, I don't know, like six, Dude. seven points. Three you don't have anything listed on there. He's uh, six foot two, but the big thing is he has yeah. a six eight wingspan and giant hands. And he he had the biggest hands in the draft for a point guard. Yeah, at the point guard position. Yes. Yeah, you're like he has bigger hands he, than he has the goon. I'm like he, that dude's like six <laughs> ten. <laughs> Yo, remember actually the old thing and we talked about this before, but John Stockton had the same hands as Shaq. No way. Same hand size. Yeah, you could you look it up. No way. Yeah. That's wild. That, how the fuck do you think you lead the league is in steals all the time? You just have bigger hands than everyone that's else. That's true. Keep that's, the ball. that's wild, man. Yeah, but dude, I mean, Deuce McBride has big ass hands. It's mad useful. Yeah, no, Deuce McBride, I think, is he's a bulldog. He's got the tape I was watching. I mean, he shot a pretty good three ball he could create. Um, but the thing that I liked the most about him was he, he knew how to take advantage of smaller guards. Yes. He, he was able to post – um he was very strong in the post he was crafty with just his timing and the way he manipulated the defenses he and can the back post. that ass up yeah no he definitely was too he was he was really i was impressed with that I, that's one thing that really stood out was his ability to read the passing lanes on defense and pick pockets and also post up smaller guards and obviously shoot the three ball i mean he came in he's a guy that is a he's a tibbs guy and another tibbs guy that we took uh, with our first pick, which was we Wayne traded Grimes, the 19th right. overall. Yeah, we traded the 19th pick. We traded the 21st pick to get future assets. And then with the 25th pick, we took Quinn Grimes. Last thing before you go to Grimes about McBride. Yeah. I could watch that last minute of the first half against uh, Oklahoma State with Cade over and over again. Him pickpocketing and then causing the other play just over and over again. I mean, it's beautiful, man. But yeah, so Quinn Grimes, we got 25th overall, average 17.8 points per game, 5.7 rebounds out of Houston, two assists, uh, good shooting splits, 40, 40, 79. Yeah. And he led Houston to the final four, which obviously without Quinn Grimes on their team, they're not getting that far. No. Nope, like you said, another t- Tibbs dude. One great note that I love seeing. One, they knew they can get him later in the first round. He was projected to go early second round. So they knew if they traded back, they could have gone him 25th, 28th, whatever. Right. Uh, they loved his performance at the combine right. against dudes that were projected to p- be picked be higher. Higher, right? He, he had he his had part already. He knew his shots. Points. Yes, ten three pointers. Points. Yep, seven three pointers. Oh, okay. That was three times I mean, ten would be thirty. So he definitely didn't make ten. No. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely not. I told you, <laughs> yeah. your boy's tired. <laughs> yeah. You're like 27 points, 10 made threes. I, I'm like, he, he walked uphill <laughs> both ways and shot 15 three-pointers. I remember back in my day, we used to have sandals on to go to school in the snow, and I had 19 siblings. We had eight sandals, so figure he had it 10 out. Three, he had 10 three-pointers. There was no three-point line. Yeah. Uh, no, he's – I mean, the guy is another tips guy. Tough. Yes. He's, what, 6'5", about a 205. You got um, the wingspan in front of you? I don't have the wingspan. Yes, I'm a I'm a big wingspan guy. I know you are. I love the love me some wingspan, dude. That's why I think quickly can. You're make like me Nelly Furtado. You're like Nelly Furtado. You're like a bird. <laughs> yeah, go you want to fly away? <laughs> <laughs> it's like my computer can hear me. I've actually looked up the wingspan for all these dudes. Uh, six eight, six five, a six eight wingspan. So pretty average size, but dude, I mean, another guy that has natural lateral quickness on defense. Uh, between him, uh, RJ Fournier, like I think Grimes. Well, actually, has a better chance to get more minutes than McBride even at the beginning. What I say, McBride I probably average well, yeah. to ten. Grimes yeah. probably get fifteen. I agree. I, I would see that he's in line for more minutes just because of how uh, you know how how packed we are at the point guard position, and we made that kind of a precedent in our in our off season. Um, I saw a cool picture. I think it was him, and I don't know if it was the McDonald's All American or whatever. Um, it was him and uh, quickly, like in a picture together. I saw it on Twitter, and this That's guy on Twitter. Adorable. 
Yeah, it was. It was. And I was this guy on Twitter is trying to get them to uh, to recreate the picture, you know, so I've kind of joined. I, I didn't do it the other day, but well, you been, signed you signed a Twitter petition. <laughs> I, I, no, I just been I've been trying to, you know, spam these guys, just get them to create it, which is cool. I mean, it just goes to show that, you know, familiarity is is a good thing when it comes at, you know, drafting someone and having a teammate. I thought that was pretty hashtag cool. Nick's culture, baby. Yeah, our culture. Finally, man. We got rid of Phil Jackson and it and everything just started to turn around slowly but surely. The ship started to write and um entirely unrelated to culture. I don't know if your hat just is bluer than mine or if your camera's better, but I like the way yours looks way better than mine. Uh I don't know. Maybe it's my uh my lighting. Yeah. My I mean I don't or know I'm just or person. I'm just better looking, I guess. And That's I just more vi- a, just more vibrant. Question. You're definitely no. not more vibrant right now. You're you're definitely no. better looking. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm the color of my MacBook. I'm just like gray. I just need to, <laughs> I need to take a, I need to take a sick nap after oh this. It's going to be lit. God. And with that, we're going to take a 10 minute timeout. So Frank, you have bed by time. <laughs> yeah. I need, to, I need um, to go grab my blankie and go take a nap. Jesus. All right. Blues clues. <laughs> I am the mailman. It is mail time. So. All right, we're gonna keep skipping. Oh, Jesus! It's too many puns now. Uh, we're gonna skip. Uh, we're gonna skip Jokubitis real quick. We're gonna go to Jericho Sims, 50th cool. overall out of Texas. Uh, yeah. he didn't play too much, but he averaged like nine points or something. Yeah, it was it was nine points, and he had seven nine point seven rebounds, <laughs> a block. Uh, and how many minutes did he play a game? Played twenty four minutes a game, so he played a healthy amount of of the played game. Half. Yeah, he played a healthy amount. I mean. I, I when we were talking you about a, jump over a house, right? Well, I mean, I know we're going to get to it later, but when we were talking the last podcast about who we're more excited to see uh, out of the young guys, I said he was one of them just because I think I, I want to see if his athleticism can translate yeah. into into anything more than just athleticism. Because when you're a freakish athlete, um, you know, and you're still really young. I mean, how young is this guy? 21, 20. Yeah, he's a kid. He's 22. It was, um, I think it was his senior year. That's why he was a late round yeah. flyer kind of thing, obviously. Yeah, he was 22. I mean, they had that that video I sent you on uh, on Instagram. I guess it was in practice or whatever, where he just dunked on someone's neck. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's Did what I'm talking about. Did you also see about. the clip where they have him literally practicing doing uh, help side rotation? And I did. Jumping up jumping without his hands. straight up in the air. Yeah, Loved just it. jumping up without his hands up just so he doesn't foul. I, I saw that. I thought, I was like, wow, what a really cool, uh, like, it's a cool like, drill. Yeah, that's what I was. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah, uh, it's You're a tired, really it. yeah. It's a <laughs> yeah. Oh man, uh, it's a really cool drill. And like you don't think to, you wouldn't think that that's something that guys would go out and just do and practice is just jump with no hands to try and just get the body language of and the muscle memory of this is how you need to jump in the NBA in order. You not know to who the out. best of that drill was of all time? Um, no, who? <laughs> Roy Hibbert. Verticality. <laughs> God. You know why? Because Roy Hibbert didn't jump. Didn't he jump. Just he just stood. stood. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be something stupid. Oh god. Roy Hibbert killed. Didn't Roy Hibbert kill us in that in that playoff series? Yes. Yes. And then and then after that, he just never scored another basket. <laughs> he fell just... off the face of the earth. And then Steph Curry won the finals, and they're like, we don't need Roy Hibbert anymore. It was the worst. He literally killed us in the playoffs, had no answer. Dude, and if you're then fucking seven nothing. four. You're not meant to be walking around that long. Do you I think Taco like... Falls ever gonna be good? Speaking of guys that are just extremely massive, no, no, right? It's like dude. he's too weird of a body, right? Dude, it's like you can take. Imagine if Taco Fall could move like Giannis. Dude, that would be. You <laughs> imagine he could euro step and then dunk without jumping. I feel like <laughs> I feel like the guy can barely get out of bed in the morning. I feel bad for him. He's just, yeah, dude. I mean, you know how Shaq has those commercials with like Cadillac or whatever Buick. I don't know who he does it for, but like this I'm dude sells six dude, this dude sells he sells school buses. This guy. <laughs> oh my god! He sells dude. convertible school buses. Two tall convertible school buses. This man has a yacht and hits his head on the fucking sky. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, he's the. <laughs> You like that one? So stupid. <laughs> oh my. That one tickled me. I don't know why. Just, oh, I, my it, God. It hit me late. <laughs> yeah. It hit me late, but I liked it. Oh That's my the God. best part about being exhausted. You get <laughs> you get silly. It's the best. Oh, my God. So Sims is uh, most likely going to be a two-way thing. The cool thing about Jericho yeah. Sims, he's probably not going to play. 
No. He does play a average like three minutes a game. He's going to be most a G likely. League guy, no? Yeah, exactly. So he'd probably get one of the two-way contracts. And like he's behind Mitch, Noel, and Taj again anyway. So it's like unless it's catastrophic or it's just a blowout, he's not going to have to see the court for any reason. He has time to actually like just develop and figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I just worry. Um, it's also the 58th pick. It's a total flyer. Who the fuck? Who the fuck? I, yeah, I, I, you know what I worry about? I worry, obviously, Mitch's health, right? Uh, because, you know, big guys like that, you just, once you start to get hurt, it just becomes a... I am hoping him adding 40 pounds of muscle this offseason is going to help. Them. I hope he... I, but what did he... Did he hurt his foot or was it his knee? His foot. He broke okay. his foot and his hand. This okay, year. well, well, you can't add weight to your foot or, or you know, so, like, you, I always worry about, like, the Yao Ming thing, where you hurt your foot and then it's just never the same. And then I also worry about uh, Taj Gibson. I don't know if Taj – how much – realistically, if Taj has to shoulder the weight that he had to shoulder in the playoffs, because he played – a lot. Well, dude, we would be torched no matter what. Like, we're not we're not making it past the first round if we're playing Todd Gibson and Nerlens Noel at center again, major minimum. We right. need we need yeah, Mitch around the postseason. You know, like the same thing as before. It's like can Kemba plus Derrick Rose get to eighty two games? We just need Mitch to play fifty games, but they have to be like, the last twenty games. have to be right. included. Yeah, right. They have to be important. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out a way where this guy Jericho Sims would see the court. It was really all I was doing, and I and I'm just thinking of the scenario of like Mitch's injury and Taj. Noel being also old. has an injury history. Noel has a torn ACL. Noel's missed games every year. Yeah, true, very true. I mean, and he's the guy hits the deck more than anybody in the league. He hits the deck like prime Allen Iverson. It's yeah. wild. It's like wild how much like a foot taller though. He has no reason to fall on the ground. He just guy just falls hard, man. Mitch put on 30 to 40 pounds of muscle. Fucking Noel needs like 10. Just get like slightly broader shoulders. I'm I'm happy that Mitch (laughs) listen. Mitch is a problem, right? I like offensively, I'm really not a fan of his um like slip pass pick and roll. Uh, awareness. I think he's kind of like a deer in headlights when somebody you would imagine him the if ball. Taj was to teach Mitch anything. It's how to set a proper pick. I would hope so. Well, I'm just saying he I, he kind of like to me. He kind of feels like like a fawn, like a baby deer. Yeah, still out there on defense. Like unless the ball's up in the air and he's already on offense. You mean on defense? He's a fucking no tank. offense. Offense only. Yeah, like he just he kind of still looks lost in the sauce. Even though I know this kid has a jumper too, and I've been waiting for them to open the playbook a little bit for him and just like see if he's got a little baby mid range. Before you keep going though, in Mitch's defense, his fucking point guards have been mostly Alfred Payne. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm excited to see. Listen, our team has been handpicked to successfully benefit everyone around them. Evan Fournier is and crafty. to grow together. Right. Evan Fournier's, I would, I want, I want. RJ Barrett learning from Alec Burke. Yeah. And and Evan Fournier. And I want like Emmanuel, craftiness, you mean. Right, right. I yeah. want I want Emmanuel quickly learning from Derek Rose and Kemba Walker. But I also want Kemba Walker learning from Derek Rose's injury experience. Yes. Right. Um Derek want, Rose has maintained his body way better in the past two years than Kemba Walker has. Right. Um I I like that we brought back Noel who Mitch Robinson, when he was playing 18 minutes a game, I think it was his rookie season, and he was, like, breaking records for, like, most blocks or whatever it was. Most and he blocks was like, and fouls per 36. Yeah, he was bad with the fouls, eh? Uh, but wasn't he, like, second or third in the league in blocks and only played 18 minutes a game? It was, He was, like, top five. It was wild. Right, yeah. He well, either blocked right. you or fouled you. Or like, you weren't actually getting the shot in. And and now and then I can't remember the uh, the deeper stats with with Noel as far as his defensive prowess went last season. He was his defensive blocks plus minus. He ended up being like top three in the league. Right. So we, I mean, these two guys are something that they can learn off of each other as well. Yeah. Right. Um. Who you think RJ is going to play the small forward this year? I don't think. I mean. Or is Fournier, it just be like Fournier fluid, and Barrett like are interchangeable. Guard. Yeah. They're like almost almost the same size, same build. Like they're just it doesn't matter. Like I think Barrett's a better defender, so they'll have Barrett cover the I, better of the two wings. Right. I think I I think Barrett potentially can be like I know I know that it's just going to be interchangeable guards, but I think like you can kind of tag him as the small. I forward. truly only care about point guard and center at this point from a positional standpoint basketball. I feel like two, three, and four are almost so fluid. 
I agree. I mean, even even the power forward center can be fluid too, right? Not on not on a not on, team, not on, but not yeah, on our for, roster, just like in the NBA. Right, for sure. There's like literally, if Tibbs wasn't the coach, I'm sure there's points this year where we'd have Obi and Julius out there together. Right, because like I mean, PJ Tucker was playing center for the for the Rockets two years ago. Mike D'Antoni doesn't believe in centers. It's the opposite approach. And and now he's an assistant coach for the Nets. Who also don't believe in centers. They play KD at the five. It's a, it's amazing. I mean, but KD like he's that's... fucking he's at yeah, the best player in the league. He's fucking seven foot. He fucking handles the point guard. He Shout out to you, uh, USA basketball, by the way. Real America. Quick. I, I don't want to get into it because like whatever. But uh, you did what you were expected to yeah, do. Yeah, good, good job winning. I mean, I Huzzah. remember the first podcast we were like poo pooing them because it was an exhibition game with that one guy. Hold on, uh, just uh, just go off on a. Uh, on a basketball uh usa basketball real quick i just want to do something real quick oh well first of all usa basketball i mean america am i right that's basically yeah. all i got for them i actually don't care i don't even know what you're looking up but all i know is i'm really happy that damian lillard kind of sucked in the usa basketball team they didn't he didn't know what part to play and he just kept getting torched on defense every single time he was out there because in my heart of hearts i was like I'm so happy Knicks fans are watching this right now because I know they're all seeing what I'm seeing, that he's like the sixth fiddle on this team. I just I just wanted to say uh, Andres Blavin again. That's all. Oh, that was. dude. Yo, who, what, what team was that? Andres, Andres the Giant. I don't remember. Oh, I, I, God. I, it was like Turkey or something. I, I could monstrous. care less. <laughs> this dude had fucking like 28 and 20. <laughs> how do people, how are dudes like that not in the NBA, by the way? It's so stupid. Like that dude definitely could be like a third string string center, yeah. second string center on a team if he's getting that many points and rebounds against Team USA he or against just, Team Canada. He was just an unstoppable force that just put that canned Canada. Yeah, Andrej Bravi. Oh, that's all right. right. Yeah, that's no, all right. I wanted. That's uh, I just wanted to do. Speaking that. Speaking of uh, foreign names that we were probably going to butcher, the last pick that we had, which was actually the second pick that we had, Rokas Djokubaitis, thirty fourth overall. Yeah, your uh, boy, you're hot on him, huh? Out of Lithuania, I am a little bit because of the interview he just gave. But uh, you guys, his stats from last year and where he played. Um. So yes, he played for <laughs> Barcelona. He's a twenty year old, six four, about uh, almost two hundred pounds. He played he did for just Barcelona. Sign a, like a five year extension. It was Barcelona, a so four it's supposed year, to be a yeah, it's, stash. it's a four year, a four year deal with Barcelona. Um. I mean, his numbers don't really blow you out of the water. Played twenty minutes, uh, seven points a game, uh, a half a steal, two and a he's half. A, he's assists, a twenty year old prospect. One point seven. He's just a, a work in progress. Yeah, he's um, twenty years old. I mean. Fucking... He shot 38%, 39% from the three-point line. Um, from the field, he shot 45%. The guy's crafty. Um, Slow on defense, doesn't have a lot of lateral you know, quickness. You know, you know what I worry about, too? We get really excited about, like, all these new... Uh, no, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Uh, like, I feel like Luca, uh, Luca Vildoza is going to get lost in the sauce, and I worry. Like, that's why I'm happy. I, like, I'm going to be tuning in to our summer league game today at 4 30 because i want to see because he's going to be on the team obviously right he's going to be playing uh vildoza he just got to the team he might not play today because of jet lag and playing in the olympics but, oh that uh, sucks man up and he's i mean he'll definitely play by tuesday or when's man the up. next game wednesday it's one man up so. get on the floor take it's a nap s- it's summer league just fucking... take it take a nap hey just pull pull it out for pain sit in the corner don't expect the ball and then run back him and i him and i might be napping at the same time on earth you guys want to share a blankie no <laughs> but yeah so uh i mean <laughs> uh, we do have too many point guards if they actually keep joe and not make him a draft stash i mean we already have too many point guards anyway Kemba yeah. walker Derek rose i i don't think this guy's really gonna end up being anything yeah he's, he's gonna be like a. uh Kuzminskis or whatever his name was. Oh, uh, Kaminga? Not nah, uh, no. It's Kuzminskis. Kuzminskis. It was like uh, Minga. What I? It was Minka M- Kuz. It was like Minka Kuzminskis, right? Yeah, or I know, like that. dude. That dude had a great hair though, and he made a couple threes. I remember he did watching. Have, dude, he did have sick hair. Yeah, it like didn't make. Legit. It was like curly, weird. It was. It was wild. legit. He had the best head of hair on the court at all points whenever he played. All right, speaking of people that probably won't play on in the NBA or play on the Knicks long term, let's go through the whole uh the whole summer league roster. So the Knicks do start today. Okay. Hopefully this I hope I get this up before 4 30 today, but if not, they'll probably it'll probably be playing while the Knicks are playing. They start out against the Raptors, 4 30 ESPN two. 
<clears throat> August 11th is Wednesday against the Lakers, 10 p.m. ESPN2. August 13th, the Pistons, Cade Cunningham versus Deuce McBride, the sequel, the 8 p.m. Sequel. NBA TV. And August 14th against the Cavs, 8 p.m. NBA TV. Get your TV. popcorn out. Get your popcorn out for Summer League, baby. And then I'm ready. make the championship. The Knicks I, are like, one of the top three teams. Uh, before, before, you, before you get into it, like, are you not like really excited for it, all jokes aside? I'm so fucking gassed. Me too. Like I'm, I'm like so legitimately excited. I'm like not even just because of like what we're doing with the podcast which obviously makes this more of a thing for us but like legitimately it's the first the time the the first time lapels badges um <laughs> uh the, it's like we finally ha- have master classed our off season to the point where we gained assets uh we didn't reach we took guys that fit our culture and fit our coaching style. We, we signed re-signed... them specifically to contracts that are tradable. Right. We re we signed people who uh, benefit the younger players around us and benefit the culture. Because like I said in the last podcast, these, these young players are like, you have to look at them as children. And having stability is essential to progression. So, so them bringing these guys back just goes to show – we trust in our culture. We trust in our coaching. We trust in our young guys. We trust in our older vets. It's it's like the perfect mixture of young, old, um, inexperience, but uh, inhibition and experience and uh, savviness. So it's like you can just everyone can pull a little something from everybody else. Uh, but that's all I wanted to say. I'm excited about this summer league. I'm excited to see what our young guys can do. I'm excited to see Emmanuel quickly and um, Obi Toppin take this uh, leadership role on this young team because that's another thing about Summer League. These guys become uh, the top dogs of this team, the leaders yes. of this team. And um, you, and then you get to see if guys like Quinn, Qu- uh, Quinn Grimes or Deuce McBride take to that elder uh, eldership of this team. And, you know, that's how the culture is built and, it's really cool. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait for 430. I'm going to – I'll be watching for sure. For I'm sure. super excited, too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, just to the point, if we do have so many point guards, I I really can't stand that people don't list quickly as a point guard. I don't care. I'm going to say it's on blue in the face where this dude retires. Uh, but we have Kemba Walker, Derek Rose, Miles McBride, Luca Vildoza, Emmanuel Quickly, and if Rokas actually, like, ma- like joined the team or made he, he it, won't. it would be, like, six people. He won't. Which you just can't rationally do if that. I'm, I mean, if Rokas I'm them, actually I let could him. get a two-way contract. I, if, I'm, if I'm them, I let him stay. At Barcelona, I let, yeah. yeah, I let him stay. At least for... I, Because, I, like, why why buy out the contract? The guy's going to progress. I mean, isn't the Euro League like, considered one of the better leagues to play in? I think Spain is uh, number... No, Spain is number one in Europe for their professional league. I mean, and then, it's up there and with then it's, China. So then, and then it would be considered like the second best league, to, other than maybe the G League. To I, I think China is considered the second best. So Spain's like third. Okay, so I mean, it's playing in a league that's pretty reputable. Yeah. He's already on contract. Why go spend any more of your money? Let him develop over there. Give him, give him a year, two years. See how he does in another year. You really care if, about James Dolan's bottom line, don't you? No, no. I just, I just, I, I look at it. I like told you, man. I love playing GM mode. That's what I like. If I were a GM, I would just see he's already in contract. Why? Well, that's why they drafted him originally. Was that so they could do a draft and stash, and it wouldn't count towards this year's roster originally? Right. So they, could, they had the Kemba Walker thing. Basically. Right. Right. Yeah. Let him stay. I don't. I don't think he's going to move the needle. Um. He'll be a. He'll be a. He'll be a Sadaransky. Your favorite. Uh, oh God. He probably won't even be that good. To the, be honest with you. The Croatian murderer. Yeah, he probably won't be that good. When you have a chance to lose against one guy. Canada, you have to lose to the third string point guard on the fucking Chicago Bulls. <laughs> well done. Wiggins and RJ against Thomas or Tomas Sedaransky. Who you got? Let's get into this. Uh, uh let's get into so this the, roster. Yeah, so the summer league roster. We got uh Quentin Grimes, obviously, uh Rogus Jokobitis, not Kevin Knox. We got Deuce McBride, Emmanuel Quickly, uh Jericho Sims, Obi Toppin, Luca Vildoza. All people we actually know are all like on the team got drafted shit like that yeah uh the dudes that aren't on the team currently that are fighting for roster spots either on the knicks or uh, elsewhere uh tyler hall who actually already played for the westchester knicks last year he's from montana state uh justin yep. Patton, who was played was on the rockets and played for Creighton. uh quinton rose also played for the westchester knicks he played college in temple 
Wayne Selden, who's played professionally for like three teams already. Yeah, he's like Israel. 40, right? He's like it's like 28, 27. I mean, he's trying. He chase your dream, man. You know, oh, yeah, more power. Play, to plays professional in Israel and he's played for the Pelicans, Grizzlies, and Bulls. Uh, Reed Travis, who's a, from Stanford and Kentucky and currently plays professionally in, I didn't write it down. I don't know where he plays professionally. Uh, and then MJ Walker and Amir Sims are both undrafted signees. You liked, you liked Amir Sims. Florida State. Amir Sims out of Clemson, dude. He like, like he was their go-to guy, and he has some post moves. You did you watch the Amir Sims things? No, I didn't. I didn't oh, at all. Oh God, you love. You're a big man that loves I, post moves. I do. You he's, would love he's Amir got Sims. Moves. I'll watch it after this. I dude promise. goes over both shoulders. Like he's just undersized. <laughs> he's just a dinosaur in the NBA now, man. Yeah. Oh, dude. that that's that what that's what brought up uh, Willie Hernan Gomez. Oh God, that's my other guy. <laughs> Yeah, of course he is. Guy made, guy made. Uh, what did he make? The all rookie team, first, first, first yeah, rookie second. team, and then, yeah. oh my god, and then he, uh, and then he just never played again. And then people were like, "Wait, this dude can't, doesn't do anything. How did he? I, this why do we let him get to, rebounds? This guy doesn't know how to defend, and yeah, he, he just, just tries to be the reincarnation of, uh, of the Dream Shake 2.0. Yeah, no, dude. Uh, the. Willie Hernan Gomez special was pretending to play defense and then pulling a Kevin Love and just trying to box out for the rebound even before the shots up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just build. That's how you build up stats as a rookie. You're like, well, we're going to lose. I'm just going to try to get rebounds and points. Yeah. I mean, some team will take me if I average <laughs> 10 and six. 10. Re- uh, not just, yeah. I mean, for a little bit, he was double doubling for us. Yeah, I know. I mean, we were losing by 15 every game, but he was yeah. doing it. Yeah. His, he was minus 53 on the floor, <laughs> but that was one game. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, that was just one game. Yeah, and then and but he had ten and ten, so good on him. Yeah, no, uh, dude, but, I'm actually excited for Amir Sims. He would be the dude I'm most excited for. That's not currently like a drafty or quickly Obi an Obi. What do you uh What do you think our starting lineup's going to be since they don't have a uh a roster out or or a lineup yet? Uh, I think they're starting IQ and Obi for sure. Uh, they're of starting. Course. I would say IQ McBride. Uh uh grimes obi and jericho you don't think villadoza is going to get a starting nod not today not the first oh game. Well, right 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 because because of the jet lag because he right, needs a not, nappy poo yeah i mean dude to fly from tokyo to vegas like it's not I mean, man up <laughs> sleep just sleep you're like man i got three days off for the first time in my life and i'm telling you're like take a half a zan 14 hours for you land <clears throat> you'll be out like a light all right all right drake <laughs> Like, don't copyright infringe me or anything. And also, who? Why would he knock off on a half a Zan too lightweight? I don't Whatever. Know. He's he probably needs a full Zan. Yeah, probably. <laughs> he didn't. He wanted. He didn't want to sound uh, too engulfed in the drug in the drug culture. I mean, the only thing I would say about the starting lineup, if I was wrong, is that they wouldn't want to start quickly and McBride at the same time because they are the same size. So they would be yeah. Up from point guard shooting guard standpoint, but. Have McBride cover whoever the best player is on the other side, whether it's the one or the I two. I mean, I mean, I can see, I can see it being Jericho Sims at the five, Obi Toppin at the four, uh, Quentin Grimes at the three, uh, Emmanuel quickly at the two, and Deuce McBride at the one. So we have the same thing. Also, they're the five best players based on what they've performed. Oh, is that what? I'm sorry. I, it's that's not the that same I, as I think. Oh, okay, yeah. Then I mean, that's that. That's what will make the most sense. And then you let these, and then you let these bums run around after. Have yeah. joke. Have joke. Dude, I'm honestly expecting Jokabitis to just get like 18 and six. Dude, sounds like game. a. It sounds like a sickness. <laughs> got, oh God! I got the joke. I got the, the joke. Bitis. How did he pass? Oh, it was the joke of Bitis. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Joe Gabitis got him. Ah, they said he brought the Rokas too. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I mean, I gotta watch. I'm gonna watch the Amir Sims stuff after this, so uh, I can watch him play four minutes. I'm later. actually scared that we're gonna watch Amir Sims outperform Jericho Sims, and then Jericho Sims doesn't get the roster spot, and Amir Sims does. I'm not scared I mean, for it. I'd be excited, but that might happen. Uh, do you think there is a huge leap in Obi Toppin's game? Because I don't think so. I'm going to go out. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not, it's funny. I'm becoming this like Obi top and hater, but like, I someone's don't, someone's got to do it. Right. I don't see it, man. I just don't see it. Isn't he? He's almost 30. <laughs> dude, I, <laughs> dude, I don't see it. Like the guys, the guys stepping out. I mean, in college, really, what was dude, he he's doing? making? He's making threes at a better clip. I think 
Yeah, with nobody on them. No, I mean, dude, but that's the, even still, it's like it's just the start of rep. It's like repetition is the father of learning. You do it first without people on you. And then he was making them more at the end of the year. And then it was like one of our best five players in the playoffs for the 12 minutes. Yeah, I mean, but so what is he what is he going to be? Is he is he going to be a stretch four that that stretch five? You mean? He would, just be, he would just be a four at this point. This is like where the league is. The fours just shoot threes now. I guess. I don't know. It just doesn't move the needle for me, man. This guy's got a – he was Dude. another guy that did a lot of posting up in college. And posting up is just – like Posting we already up in have... the A-10 versus the NBA are two different things. And I mean, but we also, have a, dude. we also have a guy that does that, and he just got a four-year contract extension for $717 million. Like, you're not going to be the guy that's posting up anytime soon. Obi Toppin is going to be a trade chip for the Knicks, and his best use to this team honestly would be for him to show that he's good and deserves to have more playing time elsewhere because he just will never play with Randall under Coach Thibodeau. And it is what it is. So you agree then? It's just I don't. Th- I'm not agreeing with you in the sense that I don't see it. I actually have. Se- I actually feel like he is improving, and he's uh, a relatively quick but late how, learner. How? Yeah, I'm. How? I think you're going to be impressed. I think. I think the three point shooting is real, and I think if he can actually turn his dribble handoff into like a couple dribbles and get to the rim, which if you all the- realistically, if you're all you're going one on one on somebody, you just need to fool them. You don't need to fucking realistically have crazy crossovers. Realistically, Jericho Sims can do what Obi Toppin does without shooting three pointers, and he can probably be more athletic on the pick and roll because that's where you that's where you need you. Dude, need also, to Obi Toppin, I think you're underestimating his help defense. He like had blocks and shit like last year. I think he was underrated. He he's not good at staying in front of people one on one, but help de- <laughs> like he's. Smart. I saw him get burnt. I saw him get burnt by uh by uh, the former Nick with the Mohawk on the Hawks. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Gallinari. Gallinari's crafty as fuck. Of course he Yeah, but he Kobe. got burnt. Duke can barely walk. He was getting he was getting burnt by him. Yo, if Daniel Gallinari would cross you up, obviously. Like of that's the sl- slow motion movement, man. Obi is just like too hyped. If you're if you move slow mo and you're in basketball, if you're like a slow mo dribbler or like like the grandpa game and then you're going up against someone that's a little too fiery and feisty, that one hezzy move, like the dude's yeah. gone because they're like so excited to try to rob you. Listen, if Obi ever hears this podcast, I don't dislike you as a basketball player. I don't think that you're a bad basketball player. I just think that you need to find for you to be successful on any team in the NBA. You have to find how to be useful, and I did not see you offensively be useful other than your little, your little pick and pops, or just you waiting in the corner for a short. Dude, Obi Toppin is going to be a stretch five for a team that's not the New York Knickerbockers in his career, and I guarantee it. Okay. I mean, I, and listen, if if he can play a lot better and then he becomes a trade chip that brings us something, I'm all for it. Because that's, that's why I think that's why got the, destiny is meant to be. We got we got what we needed out of that draft, yeah. and that was IQ for sure. Agree. So I'm good with that. Uh, but yeah, are you who else are you, would you be excited for on this? I mean, I my two are IQ and Grimes. Uh, uh, the Luca Villadoza is the guy. Like that's I know. Like all jokes aside, like I know I was he has saying, a non guaranteed like, contract. Seems- it doesn't even fucking matter, really. Dude, I have a feeling this guy's going to be really good. I don't know what it is. I think it's I think it's his confidence. It's something that I really I like a lot and how he can just shoot with someone in his face. I think if you watch him shoot three pointers, he likes to fade into the three point line. Yeah. Once he jumps, I think that's going to be something that can cause a lot of fouls at the three point line for us. Um, or you get he, blocked every time. There's and, that can go either way. No, I, I don't think you're. I, I don't think you can be coveted the way that he's kind of been. And like get the shot reject. I mean, really, like how many percentages of three point shots could block the season anyway? I get what you're no, saying. Not, I, not, not not a lot. Um, and then if Pablo Prigioni signs off on you, like I'm all for it. I'm a Pablo's the goat. Well, that uh, and also I'm a, I am still excited that Campazzo uh, said that he's his number. He was his number one rival. And yeah, Campazzo's a starting NBA point guard. So yeah. No, I, I Luca Vildoza is going to be a guy that I'm watching very, very closely. Um, I I think he potentially can be get a roster spot. Here, do you want to go through the first? I feel like we'll we should go through the first two summer league games real quick before we sign off because I feel like the next time we'll do a podcast will probably be late, like Thursday, Friday, which okay be before the Pistons because I do want to go over McBride v Cunningham again. Okay, uh, I don't have the I don't have the I'm pulling up uh, so I'll pull up. I'm just gonna pull up the Raptors uh summer league roster for you because we both okay. have the next one written down. 
Let's see. Uh, Raptors announced 2021 Summer League roster. Thank you, Google. Uh, obviously, so they have Scotty Barnes, which is going to be super exciting. That's their number one pick. Um, so the main people on here are Scotty Barnes, uh, Malachi Flynn, Utah Wantabe, which is another draft pick, uh, Freddie Gillespie. Or no, they're just Raptors. Uh, Scotty Barnes, Delano Banton, and David Johnson are their draft picks. Uh, oh, one of these dudes is from Connecticut. Actually, hold on. I'm pulling up the tweet that actually says the whole thing. Why is this in such tiny font? Jalen Adams out of Connecticut. Interesting. Uh, anyone else from by us? Nope. Uh, Delano Banton, Scotty Barnes, Justin Champagne. I remember watching this too at Florida State. That was pretty good. Uh, Zacchaeus, Darko Kelly, Malachi Flynn, Bloody, Freddie Gillespie, Ashton Hagens, Rashawn Hammonds, David Johnson. The only dude we know on here is uh, fucking Yuta Wanabe, who's already been on the team. Mm. And then it would be Scotty Barnes. So, honestly, their team does look – I don't watch college basketball too much. Uh, Rashawn Ham- or Ashton Hagens is out of Kentucky. What uh- – well, I think I have a better idea of what we can do opposed to um, because doing this. Because this, this is not a fun thing. I can just talk this about Scotty Barnes. A, this is a snoozer. Yeah. Um, I'm already tired, and you're. I'm just like <laughs> knocking. You're, you're. You're giving me my. Uh, I tried. My melatonin, right? Daily dose. I'm glad you're um, gonna be able to go to bed after this. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> how many? <laughs> how many games do we play in summer league? Uh, it's four that are announced, and then I, you can make the playoffs or the tournament or whatever i don't know all right so there's at least four they have us as the third best team in the top three in odds to what win it all yeah okay do you see uh do you think it matters if we win it all no it's the trailblazers knicks and pistons the pistons i feel like are mostly because of kate cunningham and then i don't know why the trailblazers would be so high uh I think, like I said, I want Manuel quickly to fucking show up as like a really, really a good god amongst player. Men. Yeah, I want yeah, this dude to average fucking thirty five points and like in nine assists. I know you like, said this last podcast, and I, I like thought about it. I mean, he probably is my favorite Nick right now too. Yeah, you know, he the brings the most excitement. Yeah, yep, he's electrifying. He like legitimately is electrifying. The Blazers are bringing Kenneth Fareed and Michael Beasley and Emmanuel Moody to summer league. Ugh. <laughs> you know, yo, you that's know why they're funny. favorites. Though. You know they literally have like ten year vets. I had a, I had a feel. I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke that, um, that they were gonna bring in uh Damian Lillard into uh the summer league, <laughs> and it's what a surprise they're bringing NBA players. Also, the Pistons are high up because they have Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bay, Isaiah Stewart, and Kate Cunningham. Oh, and they have Luca Garza. What the fuck? Damn. Who is, who is, I forgot. I forgot Detroit had such a good draft outside of Cunningham. They Luka did Garza, have a, Luka they Garza did have a won good draft. player of the year last year. Yeah, they did have a really, really good draft. Yeah, them in the Rockets. Had do you like remember? Uh, you want to do our? You want to do our uh, random player rem- reminisce as a Nick for the sign off? Sure. I didn't. I forgot you wanted. You had this as an idea. You sent it to your brother. You didn't even um, tell me. Who's uh, your random Nick? Michael Beasley, because you said it. Michael Beasley. I really thought you were going to say Moody. Eh? No, God, no. <laughs> God. Yeah. Michael Beasley. Michael. The big he, guy had huge hands. He was a walking bucket. Guy talked tons of trash. Walking. He's a walking fucking stoner. That dude's like dude's a walking. You no, know, he used to say that all the time. He was like, I remember he was like hitting on one of the women that were, that were interviewing him or something. It was the goat. Yeah. How the fuck? I can't believe they have Michael Beasley playing in summer league. Yeah, it's unreal. He's going to go off. That I guy's, want- how old is he? He's got to be in his uh, mid to late 30s, right? Fucking. 32, uh, 33. I'm trying to find it without having to click on a thing. Michael Beasley, Wikipedia, born in 1989. He is 32 oh, so he's 32. Years old. Yeah. Same age as me. You want to know what his stats were when he was on the Knicks? What? He averaged. Uh, 13 points a game. He shot 50. He shot 50 percent from the field, 39 percent from three. Had yeah. five, almost six rebounds, almost two assists, half steal, half block. He played really well for us. Uh, 20, All jokes aside, he 
played 22 minutes and got 13 points. Walking bucket. But, uh, but didn't he play more when uh, KP went down? Wasn't that when he started to play like a ton of minutes? Yeah. I mean, dude, it's fucking why he's played. You know how many teams he's played on? Yes, a lot. One, two, three, four, seven or eight, five, six, seven. He's played yeah. on seven teams. He's moved eight times. He has played for the Heat twice in this stint. Postman knows. So, uh, so uh, Emmanuel Moutier, huh? That's your that that's your guy. Yo, Emmanuel Moutier was one of my favorite dudes in that draft, and I wanted him to succeed so much because he was just arrogant and like his name was funny. Yeah, he sucked, like, dude. Dude, what's wrong with you? I'm in a Moutier. You suck. You suck, Emmanuel Moutier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get why they're, they're a favorite. They're like, we just brought back a bunch of dudes trying to make the NBA at 32 years old. Yeah, they they brought a <laughs> they brought a men's senior league. Kenneth Fareed. God, he's got to be in his 30s now too, right? They're born. Was, him and him and uh Beasley are born the same year. He's 31. Yeah. He didn't turn 32 yet. Yeah. So I mean, that should that that shouldn't even be allowed, man. I don't like get it. I think if you're out of the league for a certain amount of time, you can just play summer league again. Oh, that all right then. That makes sense, I guess. But like, what? Like, what are they gonna have Michael Jordan come back and? Get a, get a Michael Jordan run. would fucking destroy Michael Beasley and Kenneth Fareed right now. Why doesn't Michael Jordan ever do like a men's league thing? Just because he's just like he's he's done, he's rich and done. Why? Yeah, dude, he owns why? Why taint the? Yeah, I guess. Why taint the the legacy with playing as an old man? I guess that would be so cool though. Why don't we actually have Levar Ball and Michael Jordan? Why has that game not actually happened? I want to watch Michael Jordan win twenty one nothing against. And that's Ball. when he took it personal. Yeah. He would he would destroy. I Lamella. wish that Michael Jordan didn't draft Lamelo Ball sheerly out of spite. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's so true. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Lamelo Ball was the number one player in that draft. He talked his way out of being a top two pick. He didn't want to go to either of those. Orders. I'm not gonna lie. I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy we got a chance to redo this after uh, we kind of like jumped the gun with the pod, and then literally the day after we did the pod, all this information just came yeah. out. And I was like, Emma Walker, Julius like, Randle extension. I was like, what is going on the day after? And we're going to post this thing and it's just going to be completely outdated because it took forever to even be edited and whatever. But and I don't before know, Frank do starts shitting on anything, and that's the end of the podcast. Again, <laughs> check out our sponsor, Empire Original Designs, and join the I love Empire. You, Vin. I love you. I love you, Vin. <laughs> the East Coast number one challenge coin manufacturer, the home of challenge coins, lapels, pins, patches, keychains, bottle openers, and more. <laughs> Mention our podcast, do a shimmy, big nick energy via email for five percent purchases. Once again, that's Empire Original Designs at join the Empire.com. I've been Joe Yoke. That's Frank Traduce, the postman. And we love Vin Pulio. We love Vin Puglio. Let's go Knicks Summer League. Peace.